We always paint a fucked up reality that's not even true. It's reality what we think is true because our lives aren't what we want it to be. So think about it, when I say suffering, people cringe. People, that's the, that's the one word whenever I post about it, people cringe. It's not about suffering and how people may look at suffering. Like you had to just go to a place that just every day of your life is suffering. You have to tap into suffering every day of your life because we have so much scarring that we have to clean up. You have to look at suffering as almost like I look at failure. To succeed, you must fail. In failure and in suffering, all the answers are in there. All the answers to all the test questions, the test is your life. All the answers are in there. You don't have to live in suffering and pain and failure all the time. You have to learn, I need to visit it. Like people hate working out. You're only going to visit working out maybe an hour a day. 23 other hours of the day, you're not in it. Mm. But how you become in shape is you must visit suffering, visit working out one hour a day. Visit suffering one hour a day. Visit your past failures one hour a day. The relationship with it is the answers are in there. They, they are in there. If you have no struggles in your life, that means God is absent. If your life is easy and you have no struggles, you have no challenges, that means you're bound for hell. There's a tremendous amount of, of growth available for you. So, you know, working the long hours, taking different, difficult challenges, training hard, having very little leisure, you can offer that up as penance. You offer it up as struggle for your salvation and you thank God for it. It's just a perspective. It's a way of looking at things, right? You have to choose, you have to, look, we're all brainwash. Not all brainwashing is good. There's certain brainwash and you ask me, how do I, you say positivity is important for success, right? How do suffering and positivity work together? The whole thing is be positive about the suffering. See the suffering as a gateway to your ascension. Be thankful for adversity. Be grateful in adversity. Be generous in prosperity. I realized that God wasn't gonna give me a get out of jail free card. And from the time I was born until the time I was 19 years old, my life had these hurdles. I constantly hit obstacles, obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. And I, I had to figure out how to manage suffering, how to, how, like, how to deal with it, because it's gonna be part of my life forever. At least that's what I thought. So in order to deal with it, I had to be able to conquer it and overcome it and deal with it and know that in this suffering there has to be some kind of growth. With every obstacle, I look at it as friction now. Without friction, there is no growth. You have to have friction in your life to grow. So I start looking at all these different things versus the what was me mentality. Like, oh my God, look at my life. My life's so fucked up. I come from this fucked up family. I'm being beaten. I'm, I'm being abused mentally, physically. I start looking at it as, a, as the perfect trial ground. So I had to flip it upside down. I said, okay, I'm suffering tremendously, mentally. Use this to your advantage versus your disadvantage. So that's what I did. Versus looking at it as like, oh my God, what was me? I'm never gonna get out of here. I looked at it as, okay, hang on a second. Hang on a second. If I can overcome this, if I can find some power in this, some way to get through this, that right there would be the fuel for the rest of my life. How do suffering and positivity work together and how can I stay positive? Uh, so the very first thing that you would want to consider is your level of gratitude. This is amazing, right? Because it's easy to focus on all the things that suck, but there's a reason why we're doing the things that suck. And instead of thinking about or, or phrasing it like I have to go to work, right? Like I get, I have to go to work. Think of it this way, rephrase it, even the way you say it by, by uh, saying it, like I get to go to work. Why do you get to go to work? I get to go to work because I get to earn money so that I can take care of myself. And I'm grateful that I have this money so that I can buy food. I can put a roof over my head so I can buy clothes so I can do the things I, I want, right? You can say, I have to train hard, right? I'm training hard. 
or you get to train hard. Why do you get to train hard? You get to train hard so that you can challenge your muscles and they'll grow stronger and you'll have a better looking body and you'll have more athletic prowess. Your testosterone levels will go up, right? So you're taking on different challenges. You said, I'm taking on difficult challenges. You get to take on difficult challenges. Why? So that you can overcome obstacles. You could be triumphant. You could build virtue. You could build value. You could be a character, a strong character in your life, right? So it's not about, suffering is not the virtue. It's about holy suffering. Holy suffering is suffering in silence and gratitude. Within the suffering, go in there and I call it the live autopsy. The live autopsy. How you find out someone died, they crack you open after you're dead. How you can live is do it while you're alive. Go back in your brain, crack it open while you're alive. Don't wait until you're fucking dead to figure out why you died. Do it while you are living. Go in there, go into the suffering. Go into the pain of your life and say, why did this suck for me so bad? Why am I afraid of all this stuff? Why have I shut down the whole world? I guarantee I'll tell you why you shut down the whole world. It's in these nooks of the suffering within your brain, in the scarring, are all the answers to why you are on the couch feeling sorry for yourself. They lie within the scars. Visit them for at least an hour a day, study them, and then you'll find out more about yourself. You will then grow. So don't look at it as every day I suffer. Go into it an hour a day. Learn from yourself, learn from life, learn from your failures, learn from your insecurities, learn from your self-doubt. Don't just say, I'm afraid to jump off an airplane. Mm -hmm. What makes you afraid of it? Study it. That's why I studied my mind, why I became so powerful in the mind, because I realized I was weak. So instead of running away from the mind, I dove into it and said, what is making me weak? Oh, this makes sense. I came from hell. I came from a place that beat me down to nothing, which is why I'm afraid. All this makes sense. So systematically, one by one, I went back and met every single person in my mind, every situation. I went one-on-one -on -one with them again in my mind and said, okay, let's now revisit this. And that's how you do it. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it, some people won't. But they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old. And they have great lives. And they have great kids. The kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey.